Top 7 mistakes in relationship. How to prevent conflict in a romantic relationship. Hi guys, my name is Elena Semenek and this is my YouTube channel Psychology of Happiness. Welcome. Today I would like to offer you a free webinar about mistakes in a relationship and teach you how to prevent or avoid some of the problems in a relationship. When you meet your partner and fall in love, you believe that he, she is the one. You adore your partner, you think that you're meant to be for each other. Uh, some couples don't have arguments and fights for months. They are gentle and attentive to each other. Unfortunately, within time, little by little, we face some misunderstandings. We pay less and less attention to each other's needs and our wonderful, loving relationship becomes complicated. The love journey can be rough. You get into fights more and more often and sometimes you might even think that you made a mistake in choosing this person. Today I would like to talk to you about steps, specific steps and give you some guidance uh, how can you prevent conflicts in a romantic relationship and how to get your relationship back on track. So let's start. The foundation of any relationship is communication. After all, you two have to talk to each other. That's super simple. Mistakes happen in both relationships and in marriages. When it comes to communication, a few mistakes stand out above the rest. Let's talk about those mistakes. Relationship mistake number one is assumption. And this is a huge and common mistake in a relationship. Assumptions are the number one issue couples have. It's so easy to make an assumption about your partner's decision, but if you do so, you can misunderstand their real intentions. To avoid this mistake in your relationship, ask clarifying questions. Here are some examples that you can use. Yesterday, when you mentioned so and so, can you please clarify what you mean by that? Another example, when you said X, Y, Z, would you mind telling me more about it? Third example, if I understood you correctly, when you were saying this, this and this, did you mean that XYZ. Relationship mistake number two, talking to your partner while they're doing stuff. Not everyone can multitask. Actually, scientists have proven that no one can do two tasks at the same time. In reality, when you're trying to multitask, uh, your brain is jumping from one thing to another. Therefore, there is a big chance that some information will be lost, diminished or devalued in the process. The key to great communication is both partners' full attention. Many couples tend to talk to their partner when they're busy at work or when they're watching TV or checking Facebook on their phone. You can say that it's rare and almost impossible that your partner doing nothing and you will be right. This is the reality of our world. Unfortunately, the communication while your partner is busy won't bring you anything except misunderstandings and even a new conflict. I'm sure that you've experienced it many times and probably sometimes your partner has tried to talk to you while you were occupied by something important and you've misheard them. Just be patient. Don't start the conversation while they're busy because they may answer impatiently. They might give you wrong answer, which could create a new conflict. Wait for a good moment, especially if you have to discuss something important. A good time to discuss things might be right after dinner when your partner is still sitting at the table next to you, but already content with a full stomach and ready to talk about his day or discuss other problems. Uh, if you go on a walk together, this also might be a good time to talk. 
Or maybe before going to sleep, of course, if your partner is not exhausted and not falling asleep. Uh, you can actually ask your partner when is the good time to talk. For example, you can say, uh, I have some ideas about family vacation that I'd like to share with you. Let me know when you have free time to chat about it. Very important. Do not talk to your partner like to a little kid and do not say that you need to discuss something important because when you say I need to talk uh, to you about something important, this phrase uh, something important might create tension and your partner might think that you want to criticize them. This can put your partner into a defensive mode before the conversation has even started. So state your concerns up front. Do not be cryptic. Uh, do not say uh, that you need to discuss something important, but rather say, I have an idea about family vacation, or I'd like to talk to you about tomorrow's presentation, or I'd like to talk to you about our children's education. So be specific and this, will, uh, this way you will avoid lots of unnecessary tension. Let's compare two sentences. Sentence number one. There is something important that I want to discuss with you. Let me know when you have time to talk. Sentence number two. I've been really upset lately about our misunderstandings. I don't want to escalate things any further. I would really appreciate if we can talk about it, perhaps tonight after dinner. What do you say? Did you catch the difference? Relationship mistake number three is broad generalization. This falls under always, never, every time, everyone categories. These universal statements are harmful to any communication, to any relationships. No one wants to be compared to anyone. No one wants to wear the stigma of always being rude, always being impatient, always being busy or always being anything. We want to be unique. Every one of us wants to be unique and important, especially in the eyes of our loved ones. Try to avoid those words while talking to your partner. Instead of always say, last Monday you said X, Y, Z. Instead of every time say, I've noticed that you'd like this, this and this. Instead of never say, uh, I've noticed that you prefer so and so. Relationship mistake number four is being overly critical. Criticism can be deadly for any type of relationships. There is a fine line between constructive criticism and being judgmental. This line is easily crossed, especially in times of conflict. Criticism can be extremely hurtful and leave traces for years. When one partner is criticizing another, it damages trust. It can prevent a partner from talking about other issues in the future because they were criticized extensively the last time. Try to avoid judgment and criticism. It's better not to criticize at all. Because again, this line is easily cross especially in time of conflicts. Another major relationship communication mistake is not being empathetic. Instead, many couples begin to lecture one another. You might say that it is important to say the truth, to be open, to be honest in a relationship no matter how cold it might sound. And yes, I agree with you. Yes, you should be honest with your partner. Yes, you should um, be truthful to your partner. But there is a way to say something without interrupting and putting down the other person. If this sounds impossible to you, then perhaps for your couple, this is the time when you should consider seeking out professional help and perhaps join personal or couples therapy. Even if you think that your relationship does not have any future, at least you can try to separate in a respectful way without putting each other down. Not being sensitive to your partner can shut down the person emotionally. 
and cause them to withdraw. Or they might become angry and defensive, which is also bad for your relationship. Compassion goes a long way, especially with couples. Relationship mistake number six, interrupting and not listening. Doing this is disrespectful and rude. It communicates what I'm about to say is more important than you. This will make a person feel unworthy. Many couples do this, and it often leads to prolonged conflicts. Listening is a huge skill, and many couples unfortunately don't know and don't want to try to listen. If you start talking over each other, just notice it and take a short pause. Because when you interrupt each other, nothing will get resolved. Not listening is itself often the source of many arguments. Relationship mistake number seven, avoiding important talks. Couples need to have important talks or else the problems might escalate. Difficult conversations unfortunately need to happen. You will have conflicts in a relationship. This is normal. If you don't have any conflicts in your relationship, then this is a red flag. Something is wrong. Maybe you're suppressing your feelings or your partner is suppressing your feelings and you're pretending that everything is good. If you avoid sensitive subjects, it will make your relationship worse. Once you learn to discuss complicated topics, you will build trust in your relationship. Your bond with each other will deepen and your relationship will significantly improve. So conflicts are not always bad. You just need to know and to learn how to listen to your partner and how to discuss complicated topics, how to manage your relationships and how to be empathetic. Once you learn how to talk about important, uh, deep topics, you will trust each other more, you will have each other's back, and you will support and rely on each other. So finally, let's talk about how to read your partner. And first of all, try to avoid the seven mistakes that we've just discussed. Ask clarifying questions, do not assume, do not talk to your partner when they're busy with other stuff, stop criticizing your partner, but rather be empathetic, learn how to listen, this is a big one, and stop comparing your partner with others, but rather treat them as a unique individual. So let's talk about tips uh, how to prevent conflicts in a relationship how to minimize problems in a relationship and the first one is about non-verbal communication understanding your partner does not always involve verbal communication in fact understanding their body language will provide a greater clarity uh, pay attention to their facial expression. Uh, if uh, their facial expression correlates with their words, pay attention to their posture. Pay attention to their emotions and to their feelings. And finally, look at your partner when you are talking to them. So tip number two, do not do anything else as they speak. Because if you do anything else, you cannot notice their body language. You can ignore their emotions and their intonation. So do not do anything else while they're speaking. This includes watching TV, answering your text messages, making coffee, or even eating. If you are talking about important things while having dinner, then you can skip lots of information while you are putting yourself extra bread, or while you're pouring yourself a glass of water, or while you're chewing stuff. Put aside everything that you are doing and talk to your partner. Do not multitask. If you, are, if you want to talk to your partner uh, while having dinner, talk about the dinner. Talk about something that's in front of you. 
so you can be present in the conversation. Do not multitask. Tip number three is stay on the topic of the conversation. And this is also a big, big, big mistake when we're trying to discuss multiple things at once. Uh, this also include another common mistake. So it's going to be mistake number eight, which is when we want to bring up our past conflicts when working out a current situation. Bringing out the past will only make things worse. You should remember this. If you are discussing an important topic, if you're fighting, be in the situation, in the current situation, do not bring the past. If you're going to bring the past into your fight, then it will be harder to find the solution and it will be harder to rebuild the trust. Next tip, admit when you screw up. For some people, it's extremely hard to say that I was wrong. And um, if you will avoid this thing, if you cannot admit when you are wrong, then this will create a big, big gap in your relationship. Do not be afraid to admit that you were wrong. Uh, once you admit that you were wrong, your partner will feel relieved and likely will admit their own mistakes as well. So by admitting things where you were wrong or maybe admitting that you were rude or admitting that you did not listen to your partner uh, will bring the trust into relationship, will bring the vulnerability to your relationship. And this will be a good step to deepen your relationship and to be empathetic towards each other. Next tip, remember the power of us. Very simple. In any situation, in any conflict, or when you have to discuss uh, sensitive topics, keep in mind three components. Yourself, your partner, and your relationship. All three components are important and equal. Remember, equal. All three components are equal. You, your partner, and your relationship. When you need to make an important decision, make sure that your decision will serve all three components, will benefit all three components. It should be beneficial to you, to your partner and your relationship. If one of the components is missing, then look for another solution. Try to find different way how to solve this problem. Next tip is to commit to agreement. If you come to some type of agreement, treat it with respect. Do not try to change it. Do not try to avoid it. Do not try to modify it unless both of you agree that some type of modification is necessary. When you break an agreement, if you break uh, your promise, the other person probably will take it as a betrayal and trust will be lost. And then it will be harder to rebuild it. It will be harder to create a new agreement and it will be harder to believe that this time it will work. Next tip is to support your partner for better and for worse. Some couple make a mistake and forget to celebrate victories of their spouses. They might even feel competitive when their spouse achieved their goal or got promotion at work and they might devalue the partner's achievement. Other couples can do a completely different thing. Other couples might forget to support each other in difficult situations. When everything is good, they are supportive, they are joyful, they are nice to each other, but when something bad happens, they forget to support each other. When your partner makes a mistake, support them. And I'm not saying that you should support their actions. If they did something bad, I'm not saying that you should, should support their actions, but rather support their feelings. If your partner made a mistake and is feeling bad about it, 
be empathetic and tell them that you know how hard it might be for them and that you are here to talk to them or you are here to support them. So do not support their bad actions, but rather support their feelings. Next tip is obvious, but I still want to talk about it. Stay faithful. Unfortunately, lots of couples know about this, but still break this rule. Fidelity is a huge part of any romantic relationship. It involves trust that cannot be repaired once broken. Stay faithful both emotionally and physically. Create traditions and rituals that both of you can enjoy together. Traditions, rituals will help you to keep the spark in the relationship. So it will be easier for you to stay faithful. Um, traditions can be some physical activities like playing tennis on Sundays, going hiking on Mondays, or maybe just walking in the park. Maybe it can be uh, binge watching your favorite shows together. I know a couple who always go to Hawaii for a week before Christmas. This is their tradition. They always spend the week together in Hawaii no matter what. Uh, another couple is taking dance classes once a week and this creates a new spark in the relationship. So this is extremely important. If you want to keep the spark in your relationship, come up with something that both of you can enjoy together and both of you can share. The next tip is to keep your disagreements private. Do not discuss your problems among friends. I know sometimes it's hard and you want to share something with your sister or with your mom or with your friend, uh, but once you do this, it will make your partner feel humiliated and it will damage your relationship and ruin trust. Do not discuss your disagreements, especially with your family members. Your family members will be always on your side and it will create a picture of your partner as being the bad one. Sooner or later, you will solve your misunderstandings with your partner, but your family members will keep the image in their heads. If you need to talk to somebody, if you need to tell somebody about your feelings, how bad your partner made you feel, find a therapist. Let it be somebody who is not your friend, not your co-worker, or not your family member. A therapist can not only listen to your problems, but can also help you to understand your situation on a deeper level and support you in finding the best solution that will work for you and for your couple specifically. So do not be afraid of sharing your problems with a therapist. This will bring more benefits to you than discussing your problems with the family members. And finally, tip number 10 is to work on bettering yourself. Every couple needs to grow as an individual person. Working on yourself will not only benefit you as a person, but will also benefit your relationship. It will solidify your relationship and build trust. On this note, I would like to invite you to my private sessions and to my online group therapy. Also, check out my online courses and my free self-development webinars. I have posted more than 10 webinars already and you can watch all of them for free. All the links will be in the description of this video. And as always, if you have any questions, please write them in the comments section. I'm looking forward to seeing your questions, to reading your comments. And if you've learned something today, please click like and support my channel. Share this video with your friends and family. It means a lot to me when you're sharing your questions, when you're sharing your videos and when you are giving me likes. Again, my name is Elena Semenek and this is Psychology of Happiness. Please join my free webinars. All the links are in the video description. Until the next time, bye.